Oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> Censor myself a little bit there. Okay, I'm going to do this for real this time, and if there are interruptions, I know how to um, um, get past them. Uh, basically, for a note to self, I can just turn off the audio and the video, and then if there's suddenly discussion of um, uh, insurance stuff or something out of the blue, then uh, it's not interrupting uh right so um i gave up on trying to rotate stuff in zbrush because it's really not what zbrush is meant to be so i've got my thing in unity and i'm going to use fbx exporter uh, i'm going to start out by making sure that i am rotating this um correctly so that it's facing up in the correct direction. If it's not facing up when I'm painting with it, then the shadows are going to be all wrong, and it's just very, very confusing. Um, I'm using a 3D mouse to navigate around with my left hand, and I can also, on the 3D mouse, hit Alt, Shift, uh, and Control really easily with um, my pinky fingers uh, while keeping one hand on that camera controls. With my right hand, I've got a regular uh, five-button mouse that I can use to um, um, actually do the mouse movement. So the mouse cursor movement you see is my right hand, and then the uh, view controls movement is my left hand. But once you get used to doing this sort of thing, it becomes almost impossible to contemplate um, leaving that. So, will Polyfew bake the position rotation in scale in? I'm betting it does not, which is a problem. Well, let's see what's going on. Right now, in this particular example, we've got um, 55 thousand triangles um regard curvature uh preserve borders let's give it a bit of reduction here my All right, that looks clear enough. All right, bear in mind, it's looking extra trashy right now because I haven't painted on it yet. So we're going to reduce, blah, 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 save another mesh, uh-huh. Yeah, must save the scene. Yeah, I'm not going to save the scene. That's not how this works, buddy. Um, save it into here. Writing it, no, I'm not saving the scene. Um, gee, this thing isn't uh, saving the orientation. Bummer. All right, no, that's fine. Wait. All right, fine. So I'm going to have initially reduced this. Now I'm going to use things that are tools. No, it's not. FBX Ash Porter. So for anybody following along, don't model upside down and backwards. It's not a good idea. Make sure the front's the front, and you save yourself all of this trouble. Uh, but that's one of the pitfalls of a 3D mouse is that. You can forget where your orientation is if you don't have uh, something there to uh, 
hint at that. Where is Get Mesh Baker, I could use that to orient this thing, but I don't want to. I need to export this back out to an OBJ or to an FBX so that I can get it in um, ZBrush. So I think Unity has a new FBX exporter that is Newer, that was from 2020. That's much older. All right. We will import this one. Oh, this is unluck. Huh. Uh, fine. If it works, fine. Okay. So we import this package. The music I am listening to right now, which hopefully you cannot hear, is the uh, Born Depressed uh, thing from uh, Jim Sterling uses as his intro song. It's a chiptune version of that, which is not the one I'm hearing right now. And then there's the main version of that. It's so good. Silent Hill 3 earlier, various Final Fantasies, uh, Shining Resonance Refrain which I um, <laughs> find art questionable and have not been interested in the gameplay, but music is quite good. Um, I fired up um, the new awesome, exciting beta of 3D Coat 2021 today. Um, They've massively accelerated their painting processes, and they've got the new kit bash stuff in there. And uh, they said, you know, don't just enter your actual license key. Um, just hit trial uh, since it's like pre-license key state. It's like, okay, do that. So I did that and immediately crashed the desktop and uh, sent them a crash report that I said, that's what I did. And so it's like, well... Not using that, clearly. All right, not maximized because it's so laggy, it's interpreting mouse clicks. All right, so it should be under here. Uh, Unity FBX exporter, that's where we're at. FBX, binary, terrain quality, auto, blah, 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 blah. We're not doing the entire scene. Uh, mm -hmm, <laughs> textures, nothing. Um... Export selected object as a single FBX. That's the one. And I want to put it right in here. Uh, we'll call it RAM fixed. Let's see if it works. And let's see what the orientation is. So, RAM fixed. Vertices and triangles looking good. How's our smoothing? Looking good. Orientation is fixed. Scale is fixed. Hooray. All right. This is what I'm going to paint on. I am going to hit Show and Explore because I'll never find it. And 3D Coat. Back. New. Paint UV mapped mesh. But we're going to map it as we go. All right. So this is actually in the real folder, not my working folder. That seems okay to me. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to... The only reason I wouldn't paint in here is if um, in the working folder I was going to have some higher res stuff, but I'm not going to. So, um, uh, music right now is from some classic Nobu Uematsu vocal stuff from the 90s. Um, which again, I really hope you can't hear. I'm going to get some strikes on this channel. <laughs> uh, 
but I'm not streaming that part. I go nuts when it's too quiet, though. Normal map software preset Unity, yes, please. Uh, initial sub, do not subdivide. Keep it at the number of polygons I have. Keep UVs, now nah, let's auto map it. UV smoothing. Um, full UV set smoothing, even though we're just going to re smooth from what we have in uh, Unity. It's uh, decently smooth versus the original in ZBrush. <laughs> this is it. Same, actually, more polygons. Uh, but um, no smoothing. This is when you don't have normal maps smooth. This is what it looks like because it says this is a sharp edge. Smoothing is uh, a little bit of data at each vertex that says uh, pretend like it's smooth here, not pretend like it's sharp. How many, you know, what is the angle there? And you can set an angle between 0 and 180 degrees for each. Uh, um, uh, not vertex, not polygon. It's actually for the boundaries between the data is stored at the vertex, but the data is technically talking about uh, the boundary. I guess it is set per face. So it's talking about the angle of the face relative to the faces adjacent to it at any rate. So that's what we're doing. Uh, ZF coordinate system. I don't think I need that. Yeah, no, I don't want to um, reorder it. I could weld vertices. I've already done that. Well, I will. If they're at the same point in space, weld them. Sure. Triangulate. I don't want to. I'm using quads. Uh, don't exactly ask me why. I don't really uh, remember. I'm going to work at 2048 texture resolution, which should be uh, uh, fine. Uh, UV set name, just main UVs. Don't need. Okay, so now it's going to calculate this. It's just trying to pack it at uh, certain scale ratios, and when it can't, then it tries again. All right, and this is the UV map that it generated. This is facing up. Thank goodness. You can see the difference. Like, see the lighting and stuff up here versus down there. Um, this is an IBL um, workspace. And I uh, basically, um, so it's a uh, an IBL image-based lighting. Uh, essentially, the idea is that there is a cube map, which is <laughs> a cube map is spherical, not not cubical, but it's actually cubical uh, uh, projection into a sphere. <laughs> so a cube map is a sphere, and uh, in this particular case, it's like we're inside the sphere. You may in games be familiar with this as a skybox which is a cube that is turned into a spherical map. Skyboxes, however, don't actually cast light, unlike an IBL light, which does cast light. In Unity, I'll go ahead and show this, because why not? In Unity, uh, I have my custom shader, uh, which uh, I am using IBL lighting in very funky ways. Uh, so for instance, this is... A terrible one to apply here because it doesn't make any sense with the UVs, but uh, that's not even my shader. Where's I thought that was? Here's one beam cannon. So this has some emissive stuff and a bunch of other things. Um, the material can be seen here. Uh, this is my metalist, metallic roughness occlusion map that is compute, um, compiled into one layer. I talked about this yesterday. I mean, Discord channel, main texture, diffuse. Then I've got a bunch of other things that I'm able to adjust. Emission map, um, normal map. This is what I'll be generating out of. Um, I'll be generating this map and this map and this map, maybe this map, out of um, um, 3D code now. And uh, however, it will actually be you know, makes sense on the model. Uh, so it's like taking, you know, a map of my car and applying it to an airplane or me or a cat or something. It's just going to be nonsense. Um, anyway, but uh, the last component that's in here, which is not on this one, uh, is that it has a cube map. And 
the cube map. Let's see if I this is this is probably a better one. Is this the one? E yep. Nope. No, it's not. Uh, I never did that for the beam cannon for some reason. Uh, all right, fine. Um, forget this. Bell Prime. Bell Prime's already in the scene. I could just undo a couple of things here then. Fine. Bell Prime. Here is a perfect example of this. It's already done. So this is using an HDRI reflection cube map, which you can see here. Um, if, I, if I were to look at this uh, not as a cube, then it would be um, this big six-sided thing. But you can see that this is a um, cube map turns into this form of um, a scenery here. And you can actually see this is a casino, uh, I believe. Oh, it's a circus. This is a circus. I have a couple that are casino. The reason that circus is really interesting is it's got all these bright lights up at the top and there's a lot of red. And there's this thing here with the ring is. So this is being applied to this. Uh, you see these blue lights going by in there? Uh, I am using some HSV um, uh, I'm using some not that on here I've got some HSV Q saturation value changes that I'm making to the cube map so you can see it changes the colors and so by using just a few cube maps that are <clears throat> things that people took in real life environments for various reasons um, I can uh, really adjust it. I can also adjust the amount of albedo versus how much is coming from the HDRI map. And so um, how how much is this reflection coming in here? There is an overall reflection for the scene as well. Um, and you can think of these when I'm using an HDRI reflection cube map here, this is like looking from the outside in on that sphere. When we're looking in the scene itself and looking at the reflections that are coming to it, uh, like for instance, if I turn this off, there's still some coming from the scene itself. That is like being on the inside as if the skybox is shining light in on us. And those are reflections. In 3D coat, this IBL map is used for lighting. This is a very basic uh, lighting environment, which is good because uh, eventually I'm going to bring it into my own lighting environment. It's going to look different, but it's not going to look too different. Uh, when I was working in Substance Painter the other day, it was really frustrating because it was an incredibly reflective environment that was going to be really inappropriate. That said, I have built into my shader all these things where if I don't like how it's interpreting across, I just just apply a little um, slider on there to make something more metal or more rough or less metal, more rough, less rough, whatever. And I even have a way of adding a flat roughness across the board to make something less reflective because I found that I was needing that often. The occlusion I can adjust and I often do because the way that it gets calculated in here, uh, there you go. You can see uh, that it is affecting the seams and often affects the dark side as well. And a lot of that just has to do with the custom shading that I am um, the custom lighting pipeline that I'm working with. Same deal with the normal maps. If I put these way up, then it starts looking pretty tacky. Um, if I go a bit lower than, if I go completely to nothing, it can't do anything because it can't um, figure out what the heck uh, light should do when it hits. So it basically says, oh, no light comes off. There's nowhere to bounce. So if I've got at least something, uh, it, it, once we get down to next to nothing, you can't see anything. But then as you um, start coming in, you start getting the, uh, this is pretty, uh, um, straightforward mesh, so um, not the best for showing 
usually the ones where uh, there's a lot of surface detail on an otherwise flat surface are a great example. The main menu, that's a perfect example of that, where we have some literal flat planes all over the place, and then they wind up looking like... Um, like they've got tiles and a bunch of uh, sub detail that does not exist whatsoever. All right, so we're going to paint on here. <clears throat> so um, let's see. All right, so control and mouse wheel is the depth. Alt and mouse wheel, what's that do? That is, I don't know what that is. So smoothing depth opacity shift in mouse wheel. This is smoothing. Okay, so how smooth it is. Oh, okay. Oh, opacity is being adjusted when I hold shift or alt. Okay. Okay. Um, right. So right now, just making black strokes. This is what it does. Obviously, that's not what I'm going to do. It is annoying. I have to take my f hands off to get to the uh, keyboard. So I'm back and forth with my hand from my uh, 3D mouse on my left hand and the keyboard. But at least my right hand gets to stay on that mouse, which helps with speed. So what am I going to do here? I am going to use a brush of some form. And let's let's find someone layer one and surface materials, find paint objects. Okay, yeah. Uh, I think this just <laughs> yeah, no, that's not what I want. All right. At yeah, and you can see how it's going into the UV uh, texture there. Attempting to paint over invisible layer. You can't do that. Okay, fine. So I'm going to do what people usually do and say, let's get ourselves a base. What just happened? Oh, shit. All right. Let's get ourselves a base that... Options, color palette. I think what I can do. See, I'm coming from Substance Painter, so I'm having to. So add not just a regular layer though. There's like a paint layer. Just watching a tutorial for this, but for the new 2021 version, Smart Materials. Here's what I want for now. So the Smart Materials. Well, first of all, I need to make some maps. <sighs> so this is a good reason to not do it in the folder that I'm doing it in right now, but. Uh, okay, so I want to I want to bank a curvature and AO map. Why is that? Eh? Okay. Uh, texture baking tool. Okay, yeah. Okay, texture baking tool. Use it. Use current low poly mesh only. I'll bake these at this level. Okay, it's, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go just calculate the occlusion, light source sphere into new layer. Fine. Okay. Wonder where it saved that texture. Okay, so now we have a curvature map. Uh, so this is got an AO map as well. Do we? Did I just calculate occlusion? I guess I did. All right. Uh, this time we're going to um, calculate curvature. So the AO map uh, shows where it's darkest, where things are sh self shadowing. So uh, the, basically, so ambient is referring to the ambient light instead of directed light sources because directed light source can go wherever. You can shine a flashlight up your nose, but uh, um, the ambient light does not go up your nose. <clears throat> okay, yep, so now I've got a curvature map and an ambient occlusion map. 
Normally the curvature map does not show because that would be pointless. However, curvature map is actually used in feeding these smart materials. And these smart materials can be customized and all sorts of different things can be done. So let's try dragging in a less a rust, a rust layer. Actually, I think what I have to do is, yep, it's going to do a preview for me. Okay, so let's just do copper old, maybe. Okay, and then let's, oh, right, get default, dirt, stuff like that. Uh, it's just dust. Yeah. Dust uses the curvature maps to figure stuff out and AO. Fabric, that might actually be a nice start for these guys. So, I know that sounds weird to use uh, a fabric, but uh, I want this thing to be organic. And also, look how it's um, not really coming out of everything. Well, silk, that could be interesting. I'm going to keep any of that, but I want a base to paint on that's interesting. And because I'm trying to make something that's alien, that's mechanical and organic at the same time, that means that I need to not follow the normal advice of how to normally paint something. Because it needs to look alien, you know? Leaks. What the heck is this? Oh, that's interesting. See, this is why the orientation would matter. Because uh, this is using triplanar projection and just coming from the top. That's interesting. I don't think I'm going to use anything like that, but okay, cool, fine. Uh, leather. What do we got here? That's kind of nice. Hmm. That's an interesting base to paint on, maybe. Or <clears throat> I could go with something that's more metal. So we've got our, what is this? Oh, Lord. Um, when we make this thing aluminum. <laughs> this sort of forged metal has a bunch of... Uh, let's see, there, we're, now we're talking. Now we're talking. The gun metal, I think, is really good, too. That one's more glossy and more sharp. The edges. Uh, I just want somewhere to start. You know what I mean? Hmm. All right. Yeah. Gunmetal. I think double click it. Maybe. Maybe that was it. No. Uh, smart material editor. Attach the current layer. Fill entire layer. I'm so used to Substance Painter. I have never painted before in this. Okay, what just happened? What's wrong with you? So, set AO. Go away, smart material preview. Right. So, this may be identifying some problems I was going to have in general. Uh, I paint across this. Okay, I need. Okay, come on now. <sighs> Just give me a standard pencil right now. If I paint here, goes perfectly. Perfect, perfect. That was just a it not catching my brush stroke. Okay, so we got no, we got no problems. So the UV unwrap is okay. So what the hell? Why? All right, I got disconnected and reconnected for the. Okay, 
So maybe smart materials are not for me with these. This looks like something that the I don't understand. I just don't understand. Did it? It did. Oh, you stupid thing. Okay. So here's what happened. Uh, it applied things really nicely in the preview window, and then everywhere else it didn't. <laughs> that's that's funny. Okay. So our smart preview window is perfect, you know, when it's applied. So attach to the current layer, fill entire layer, what? Attach to the current layer, I guess. I don't know. That looks correct. Okay, attach to smart material to the layer. I may edit properties of material and smart material error, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, give me a pencil and I'm just going to draw now. Um, all right, so layer one on top of this thing is not a smart material. This is just a material where I get to draw now. My turn. So I should be able to uh, come in. Yep. So I'm drawing, and this is affecting. Um, you can tell there's a normal map being built up here and it's got a texture to it. So what I need to do is figure out what I want to do in general uh, that, that's separate from all this. And uh, I am not going to be drawing with that sort of uh, stroke. So uh, those have to do with pen. Um, all right, so I want radius variation, sure. And then I really want this to be larger. I do, I'm not painting at this sort of depth. Radius, okay, cool. Yep, all right. That was laggier than I would have preferred. Why, can I bake this? If you're not baked, please bake. Uh, freeze painted pixels, I guess. I don't know. I wish it would explain. Whoa, what the heck? That's psychedelic. Okay, stop, stop that. What was that? Oh, dear God. That was dizzying. So slow. Oh, my God. I mean, I could save this back out to a material and then do something else, but I don't want to. Okay. So, highly glossy right now. Obviously, this is black. And this is a huge normal map um, indentation. So, whoa. No, 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 no. I want paint, not retopo. Okay. So this is why I didn't get into um, this more. That this particular one. Oh man! And it reset all my. Whoa! Now what am I doing? That's not. There we go. And it threw my radius away. Thank you. That's helpful. Please always forget what I was just in the middle of doing. Fall off a lot, I think, or maybe a little. Nope, a lot. Okay, it doesn't matter. Depth. 
I don't understand. Uh, opacity, take that down a fair bit. There we go. Now we're talking. Whoa, what did I just do? I want to have a mask, which is nice, right? Roughness, that's why it's just slimy right now. Yeah, okay, fine. Can't even tell it's there anymore. Uh, I think you should really clear this. Uh, that's not what I want to do. Well, whatever. If it's so subtle that I can't tell it's there, then uh, not a problem. I am going to work in. Orange for the moment. Let's see what I'm doing. Okay. Black on black does not really help. Okay. <clears throat> so getting the idea there. Um, now, these brush options, I really think I want down here. Not that. Mind that, I guess, actually. Okay, fine. Uh, okay. I understand what's happening. Happy enough. Metalness. This is the PBR painting. Okay, so that's pretty metallic, which I like. Can make it less rough, it's gonna be smoother again. Glossier again, kind of like that. All right. This jives with what I'm looking for. Opacity down a little more. Mm, not that much. What I want is more of a spray pattern. Okay. So there's that. That's weird. Don't like. Use this. Uh, Ooh, what do we have here? So these are alphas. That's more my speed. All right, and I have a ton of alphas. Um, living largely in unity or uh, the zbrush but let's see here c alphas i think ah oh, so many of these are psds so i can't see the original okay I could have sworn I had a bunch that were, maybe it's in Z presets. I probably think I put that ZCC startup, put them on there. And then I've got a bunch of alphas. There we go. Okay. So we've got a bunch of bricks and things and then some other stuff. Grass. Okay. I'm going to use this one. So I've got, <laughs> very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. So let's see. Uh, jitter. Okay, I can adjust these different things so that I get more jitter and stuff as I go. Uh, Du, 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 du. 
Oh, whoa. Now that's funky. Inner, adding a hue jitter makes it look like oil. I'm going to do less than that. Your brightness. Because I don't want to paint perfectly. That's the whole thing. Uh, my hands aren't steady to begin with. And um, I want to paint something that looks organic. I'm not, I don't have a steady hand for that. And uh, so, yeah, smoothing off, I think. Yeah. Depth, if I turn that all the way up, that gets nuts. Yeah. So the depth is really kind of a problem right now. Okay, so literally we went from 12% being like insane to 0% being nothing. So what is 1%? Okay, wow. So, because I want the variation of this, a little bit of depth would be nice maybe. Actually, I'm deciding no. I really want almost no texture from this. I am looking to paint some color in here, and that's what I'm going to do. All right, so we're going to do this. It's dark under here. But it'll be dark under there in the game too, largely. Can rotate the light, but I don't want to. I need to figure out how to save this as a preset for my brush. Uh, presets, probably. Because I'm going to use this brush over and over and over again. Add preset. Pen. That's a lovely name. Rename. Uh, of course, basic flat. I don't to spell my name. It's C flowers. <clears throat> All right. That's my little flowers one. Uh, hopefully it saved everything but so i'm gonna have this drip down a little bit that's interesting with that white there oh i'm not doing a symmetrical painting i meant to well i'm all right with that i'm just gonna do a little bit of just getting this wah! Getting this, oh, that's not good, that's not good. Uh, this last part's been a mistake. What I am going to do, and I, I think I would like painting symmetry on, is that even an option? You would think it would be. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. It's kind of a basic thing. Contrast lighting. That's uh, good. Lower contrast is a little nice. Let's see what I'm doing a little better. Rotate as I want. It's an interesting seam there in the middle. See that seam? I'm not going to stress about it. All right. <clears throat> uh, it's all environment texture stuff. I can adjust my field of view. That's nice. OK. So what I want right now is a much larger radius. Hello. Hello. 
Is this the largest it'll go? That's the largest it'll go. Why? Okay. Be that way. So now I'm essentially stamping all the lag. Oh, it's laggy as hell. Okay, so, oh, I love that. Whoa. Does it think I'm still drawing? What's happening? All right. Let's go to the back here. What's with this insane lag? Oh, okay. Anytime this touches, it starts lagging. I see. All right. Frame rate is 168. Yeah, in your dreams. My frame rate is like three. That's probably why they don't want the brush to go that large. <laughs> All right. Radius. Real max. Yep, that's what it is. All right, well, fine. I'm going to do it anyway, on occasion. But I won't complain about them when I do it. So, compromise. Now, I want a little bit of a different texture. So, I'm going to open a texture file. Remember my folder, please. Thank you. I want something less organic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh, hexes too. Yes, please. All right. Let's uh let's move over into kind of some steely blues. Uh Yeah. Looks good. It's a little on the light side though. Uh, okay, I'm going to make it less rough. Thank you, I like that. Good. Pick it up more. Uh, more metal. Yeah. Which means I'm going to need more roughness back. Okay, fine. Opacity. Lower opacity is better, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, very rough. No, no shine at all when I do that. So, oh, and since I've changed my colors and stuff, uh, it's lost all my jitter for some reason. Don't know why. Maybe it's because I changed alpha. Mm -hmm. Fine. Well, this I think I want a little depth from, maybe. Maybe a little smoothing, was it? Not sure what that's about. Fall off. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, and what I really would prefer is that this be a pattern. But I guess I will just work with a smaller brush. Yeah, that makes that, that makes a certain amount of sense. That's that's not gonna work. This is not gonna work for me. This is it, it is a hex. Okay, cool, fine. But um, uh, well, I'll keep it. I guess. Um, the reason it's not gonna work is that I need a pattern that is irrespective of my brush size. I can't be working 
with my yeah see that's better and now I can make my radius larger I'm painting with the actual texture here uh, fall off and it's a lot how does this work uh, yeah so I thought, okay so this makes more like a strip all right which I'm happy about smoothing. Uh, yee, nice. Okay. Okay. Getting used to my tools. Okay. So that's enough to give me some what looks like micro detailing at a distance without it being insane. Now, I want it. Whoa! Dang, I hate that. Sometimes when I grab the model itself, oh my god. As soon as I grab the model itself, it thinks I'm using the traditional mouse controls, and then it uh, rests all regular control from me. Yep, that looks like ass. Okay, so... We're going to have some depth variation. That's going to be important. See, this is when I like the... Ah, I did it again. This is where the parametric stuff comes in. I don't know where it's saved to. Your opacity. No thanks. Position, yeah. Whoa, not that much. Holy cow. Never mind. Retract. I don't know what the hue is on a scale of. Scale of 1 to 256? Scale of 1 to 360. That's not what I would have guessed. So, that's actually more, much more interesting than the blue I chose. Fine. 0 to 360. Sure. Just the brightness also. Eh. I don't know. Saturation, sure. Well, how bright are we going to get with that? That's interesting. That is an interesting... Okay. Depth is still too much. I, you know, this this isn't working for me. I don't like this. Uh, or maybe it's just the fall off it needs to be more or less. I don't remember. This this is too inorganic. It's messing with my. Uh, Now this would be interesting. It's very diffuse um, strokes it's going to put down, it looks like. That's not working like I would expect. Why not? The black. You ignore the black. It's not how this alpha works, apparently. That sucks. It should work that way. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. I 
That is a weird... interpretation of how to use an alpha. I don't know if it's using just the alpha channel. Usually you use the grayscale. White is draw more, and black is draw nothing. So grass six should draw nothing except these little footprints all around. It should be really nice. Uh, it is not nice at all. Now this could be interesting. This is going to require me to use a smaller brush, but this could be really interesting. Or I use a larger brush like I have been, but I use it more as a stamp. Yep. Am happy. Uh, jitter rotation. Uh, random flip X and Y. Okay, fine. Jitter to the hue. A little bit of saturation. All right. Happy. This is going to be for down here. Nobody's ever going to see this. <laughs> Nobody's going to come down here and look. But it's there. When you're looking from behind, you'll see it. So this is a, an interesting conundrum I run into. Of... Um, this painting I'm doing has got strong normal maps on here. And so I really risk losing the uh, detail of the sculpt that I did because you can't see it behind all the uh, paint. Um, it's always a part of the conundrum. Right. Oh, I like that. So we've got this kind of metallic y stuff going on up here. And then. Um, what has become a uh, deeper stamp situation down here. This is organ uh, this is curved, but clearly not organic, and I like that a lot. Depending on the way the light is facing. Is it this one? That one? That one? This one? You didn't really catch it in the light differently. So I'm definitely not going to go into the horns with that. This big lip on the back. I don't want to go with that either. Because again, one of the big things you're looking at my naked sculpt is what the hell is all that stuff? There's not details of material and whatnot to tell you. I'm going to make this intentionally and obviously asymmetrical. I'm going to flaunt my asymmetry. This thing has some sort of weird skin condition. The zenith. Don't speak about it to each other. You just kind of, sort of politely look around. And we'll have it come around here. And up around this edge. Something's going to be asymmetrical. It's going to be asymmetrical. Okay. I should be painting in more than one layer here. Dang it. It's all right. So, okay. All right. Uh, add a preset, I think it is. Add preset. Pen. Yes, that's super descriptive as before. Um, see, Fleur. 
details. Or I mean, fleur de lis. So, how's my other thing with the flowers? Does this work still? It does. Good. Good, good, good. Because what I want to do now is I want to keep my variations. It did. Yes. Excellent. <clears throat> okay. Now, for whatever reason, you're green. Sorry, bud. A little bit of moss, I guess. What I'm going to do, actually, It's a lot of depth. If I wanted to paint non-destructively, I'd be on multiple layers, but I don't want to paint non-destructively. I want to blend. So I'm painting on one layer. Um, This is why 3D mouse is important. You can't get your view in here really quickly any other way. There is zero other way to do that. Literally, literally, zero. it's it's like losing an appendage. Versus, I just move my fingers just a slight, slight bit, and I'm in here. You can't do this without a 3D mouse. So many programs don't support 3D mice. They don't understand. Like, I mean, I don't care how great you are on the keyboard. You cannot get there as fast as I just did. Need a third hand to work the keyboard, but I'm gonna blend this down into the whoa. Okay, now see I'm saving down into here. So it's got this green tail thing going on. Wrap it around this side. We're gonna associate that with the dermatitis. <laughs> Not entirely, but some. All right, and that I want to keep sharper and shinier. I may repaint that later. Uh, all right, up here, do I want any on this? Mm. Too much. Nope, 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 no, nope, 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 nope. It did not work at all. So I'm going to do that thing again. I'm going to first um, save this. Add preset pin. Uh, see flowers. Scaly, because that's basically what we're doing. So essentially, what I want to do is have kind of a visual lexicon here of little things. Not a visual lexicon, but uh, uh, painter's palette of things that I'm going to use in a lot of my Zenith models in the future for various sorts of details on them that will kind of tie them together. And um, they all need their own unique stuff too, but um, this doesn't really look like moss, but it does look like something. If I had adjusted the metallicness and roughness, that probably would have been a good idea. But um, I'm going to type in the forbidden two, and ooh, oh, well, hello there. Uh, well, this is very interesting. I'm going to, this is moving on to my next thing, which I did not think I was doing yet. <clears throat> um, new texture file then. I want something different. 
Mm. Mm. Okay, here we go. Say rock nine. All my differentiating stuff went away. Jitter hue, but not that much. Jitter brightness, a little saturation, a little bit. Yeah, all right, but green is not what I'm after. We are going to be Let's go into the this realm, okay. Mm, yeah. It's not cutting as much as I want. All right, depth. Yeah. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. All right. All off. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I want a large fall off. Uh. These shiny cuts. Now they should be pretty rough, I think. Pretty metallic. The surface I can see. Mm. What if they were shiny? They start looking like weirdo creases. Death Thunder, let's see. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. That's the most the normal map can handle, basically. Uh, I'm going to really tone down the normal map in general, I suspect, but I usually do in Unity, but I've never worked with this program before, so uh, as for creating normal maps, so uh, maybe not. I guess we'll find out. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Put more into the orange realm. All right. Brush down to behavior levels. Ooh, gross. No. Nope, 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 nope. Two it is. I do like those smooth areas, though. Mm. I'm not going to mess up those smooth areas with this. It's very attractive. I think what I need is, this is a bit weird. This big area that's just nothing. Yeah. Look more aged. When it's all just rounded and bulbous by itself, it looks super weird. Yep. Glad I'm painting asymmetrically. That is going to help with the organic feel of this. You can tell it's different on each side. If I knew where the symmetry button was, I would not be painting asymmetrically. This requires twice the work. <laughs> Glad I don't know where that button is. 
Uh, all right, smooth in here, kind of an interesting fan effect. Um, I like this smooth bit here too. This needs blending. So, you may ask, what is a vision that I have in my head for this? And my answer is, I have no clue, because um, <clears throat> I'm trying to, in a lot of ways, create something that I can't necessarily imagine. I have goals for it that I know that I want. Um, I want to have uh, metallic parts. I want to have, um, you know, some, I want to have good reflections off of this, you know, and I want it to have um, an unevenness to it and look a bit on the alive side. But at the same time, I mean, I went with the metallic look for a reason. Um, and at this point, um, you know, you could argue that this is a bit much. I will probably tone that down in Unity. You could also argue that I should have been working on a second layer for that specifically, a third layer. Hmm. We'll see. I am going to save this as a new preset. Uh, which I will call um, C Big Cuts. I call it Cubs. No, Cuts. Okay. Um, this is how I should be. All right. How far back can I go? Pretty far. Yeah, I don't like that. It's too much. Too easy to tell where it is and where it is not. If I do three, that's better. That's much, much, much better. Hey, what did I just say? Another layer. God damn it. All right. Uh, okay. We'll call this main paint. Uh, that's under layer, but I'm not going to touch it because it gets all laggy when I do. That's what we call uh, cuts. Depth 2%. This is much, much better. Uh, can I update preset? I can. Update piece preset. Eh? Did I miss? Or does it not work? When I'm on, I just, I missed. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks. Try again. That's better. So now we're back to parametric. Uh, I cannot precisely move my hand enough to make stuff like this. It's just beyond me. I cannot do that. I can make decisions about where I want things to go. Um, and I can, uh, you know, have a, a goal and a vision and set out on that. <clears throat> but I cannot physically draw stuff like that. It's uh, out of my capability. So I still want to do art. I enjoy it. I'm pretty decent at it, I would say. And um, it's very orange. All right, so in this area, because I am blending this with the reds, I'm going to go more. I, I really like the reds that are already there. So I just want, oh, that's too much. Um, <laughs> that's interesting. I like that. Looks intentional. 
I mean, you know, like designed on purpose and it's just not like so this these parts here, these are some sort of vestigial claws I decided. And this is like the big brain and the eyes and whatever. <clears throat> Do I want to paint an innocent flare? I don't know. Let's get some cracks in here after all. It's smooth but too smooth. And here as well. Yep. Okay. Yeah, back here. Let's do it right. Come on, man. There we go. Okay. So this is too much down there, and that's okay. Because uh, I would rather have too much and then uh, come back and blend it out than have too little and uh, see the seams between where I was doing things. Okay, good. I really, really want these cracked textures on these horns. That looks more intentional, like they're these are horns. That's too sharp. <clears throat> okay. Nope, 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 too much. Uh, yeah, all right, I'll do that. That side's more damaged than this side on purpose. This is also the side with this. This guy's had a rough time on his right. Let's continue that to the face a little then. Let's do that on the underside of the face. It's butt face. Face that is a butt. Nope. Too much. Let's do more here. I think I heard a comment on YouTube there a little bit through. It does look kind of like a bat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. Still live, right? Yep, that's good. All right, this is coming out good. Um, it's got a lot of different colors in there. Um, does not look, you know, procedurally done. I'm going to update my... Hmm, I'm going to add another preset. See Big Cuts 2. Oh, it let me name it and then didn't keep the name. C Big Cuts 2. Yeah, it's kind of bat like. Um, initially, I was um, pulling down the central uh, section and I was thinking about that, but I was not thinking about. I'm going to actually save this. Um, and this is going to go in Neowar 2 working, DLC 2 modeling, Z4 spiky horns, minus a three brush thing. This is, uh, what's this thing called? Uh, Z3 spiky ultra, horns ultra. Z3 spiky horns rem paint. Rem paint. All that stuff gets backed up. Means my backup service, which is nice. Uh, but so does the other, but it doesn't go to SVN. Okay, so now I've got some interesting pre presets here. So I want to go back to my. F do I? Yeah, I do. I want to go back to my flowers. Now I'm going to go back to main paint. We're going to deal with this area that's too rough. And it's awfully green. So I'm going to start blending out. A little bit of this. Uh, this is for actually painting versus stamping. Um, crap. Um, 
getting kind of muddy now. Hmm. Do I like this? I don't think so. So let's have a little bit of depth. Let's go into the green realm. Also kind of dark. And how about this is a smoothing brush. I like that. A diffuse smoothing brush. I like that. Now, you may have noticed earlier, it did not you know, escape my attention, that uh, there was quite a bit of repetition in this um, paint. a lot. That was too much. That was way too much. Uh, there's quite a bit of repetition in the paint, painting that I was doing. And, uh, you know, to some extent you can escape some of those patterns with uh, just continuing to have the randomization. But <clears throat> uh, I specifically uh, was planning on coming back and smoothing out some of that. So now I'm painting more with texture than I am with anything else. What the texture I'm painting with is more or less smoothness, I guess, is what I would describe it as. Mm, it's not enough. It's not look good. Depth, 46. Power. Whoa. Mm. Nope, nope, nope. It's very rough and not metallic at all. Okay, how about if it's sort of metallic? There's a scale online where you can find out what the metallic and roughness combos are for any particular material. If you want rubber, or you want whatever. Uh, grass, moss, blah, 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 blah. Uh, there's some definite uh, moss going on here, it's sort of partially, thanks to Puffin's desires. I am not getting results I like at all. It's very different from sort of sculpting way that I would remove this stuff. So I need to learn a new thing. What is this? Depth and soothing, opacity, glossiness internally. No. Depth modulator. Paint with dabs. Rotate along stroke. No. Uh, they have the literal stamp, which I could have been using instead of using my paintbrush like a stamp. But uh, it's the eraser. So I guess the eraser is what I'm going to use for a bit here. It's tiny. It's got zero radius, that's why. What? No, not like that. <laughs> fall off. Okay, a lot of fall off. Yeah, you see how much detail there was that was lost by putting on more normal maps here. Um, this is, you know, always the risk. Uh, the cool details from the model itself can get completely lost if uh, you're overdoing it with the paint on the basically things that are already interesting to begin with in the model. So 
So, um, I'm going to come back in here with some more green stuff a little bit. Electro swings on at the moment. And anywhere where I'm seeing too much of the pattern here, where it's just like really obvious repetitions, down that a little bit. I'm going to save this preset as well. Okay, C detail eraser. Do I need to save all of my presets? Guess so. Better safe than sorry. I've lost some Photoshop presets, actions, not presets, actions in the past, so not keen to repeat that. All right, this is on the cut slayer. Same sort of deal. Especially around these um, most interesting areas. Less than that intensity, a little bit. Back to the main paint layer. Glad I separated those out. See, with this, I can control exactly where I want this stuff to go, but I put down in a kind of generalized sense earlier, and so yeah, it's looking pretty good. Which, uh, I knew I was going to come back and do this in some fashion, but I didn't know I was going to use the eraser specifically. What I was thinking I was going to do was use some sort of smoothing brush, but yeah, every tool is different. So, this one, I'm using the eraser as my smoothing brush. And um, I do want a lot of these details that I put here, but I don't want nearly so much of it. Enough for visual interest, but I don't want this to be a reptile. But I do like it having some reptilian kind of X areas here. Green is just too much. Less green. But in terms of how it was applied, like that's fine. You know what I mean? Like getting it out. Now, this is what we call a non destructive uh, workflow where nothing is forever. And so I put down a lot more orange and stuff than I was intending to, or really more of a rust red sort of color than I was intending on keeping. Um, but then I wound up liking it, so I'm keeping it. Um, but green, I wasn't sure how I would feel. <clears throat> and I really want more of a hint of it. And these, uh, like, flur delete thingies are also something that I like, but less is more. <laughs> you know, after the initial, like, just throwing some paint on this thing, uh, with the smart material, I mean, I could have called that done then I wouldn't, but I have in the past because I wasn't confident in my ability to go back and do, I've watched about 20 hours of videos, mostly after work of tutorials and various programs in this week. Um, and that has been really educational. And this is an area that I've always wanted to be able to do more in directly. Uh, versus relying so much on parametrics, but you can see I'm still relying on parametric details a lot. I am not relying on having a steady hand. I'm not even using a pen. I don't want to use a pen. Um, <clears throat> I want to use double mice. And uh, so um, there's a number of 3D artists that work, not in most of these pens, but uh, there's a number that use... Um, assisted tooling of some sort where there's uh, intentional 
generate extra details because some of this stuff is taking a human forever to do or you just can't you can't most everybody can't draw the sort of random that that we want for something to look natural and not intentionally painted uh some of these cuts are a little on the harsh side let's scale that back a little bit don't want you to look so damaged there, buddy. <clears throat> Make this brow nice and smooth. Get a little kind of gold, too gold there. All right. Um, so at this point, I could come in and paint more, but... I like where the kind of mossy hints are, and the dermatitis is gone. It's now more of a, uh, a detailed uh, bit with normal maps. These are just 2K normal maps, too. Like, uh, so nice. And just uh, 2048 by 2048 pixels that we can get this level of detail. This should import into Unity really, 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 really well. <clears throat> um, Typically with my models in Unity, we have emission on basically everything. Uh, there are a few ships that don't have an emission layer, but it's rare. Um, I think I might make a shader variant that's just skipping the emission map outright. And that's going to save two megs per model in terms of RAM and VRAM. And I don't feel like painting that. I don't feel like these need it. I don't feel like it's natural in them. There's no point in these things where I go, ah, oh, yeah, this should be ship lights um, uh, sticking out of these things. <clears throat> so, so I'm not going to do that. What time is it? Oh, wow, it's one. All right, well, that's fine. Get some lunch a little bit. All right, so we're going to save this, and now I'm going to work on exporting it. So I did UV unwrap this again, which means I need to export the model, and I need to export the textures. So uh, we are going to export object, objects and textures. Um, <clears throat> uh, okay, all right. Now, here we are able to adjust the texture list. And if I recall, don't make me combine these myself. Please, please, please. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so I don't need an emission layer. Uh, so I want, to, and I, uh, as much as I would like to have a height map, I, I don't, that's for tessellation, I can't do it. That's just gonna get lost. We have a normal map. Um, and uh, I need to pause for one second. Hello? This is he. Doing all right. Ah, yes, I did. I'll be in to grab that. Yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. You too. Bye. I'm sure hoping that mutes things. Not that it matters with that. That was just pharmacy calling to remind me of a prescription that I need to pick up. For myself, uh, it's just allergy medicine. Okay. I want this. Wait, what? Uh, okay. Don't want any RGB correction. What I want is... Did I make one already for this? No, I didn't. 
Oh, ah, shoot. Okay. Unity standard. Okay. Height, not doing. Don't want TGAs. We'll take PNGs. Thank you. TGAs are ridiculously oversized. Not doing a mission. Where is my roughness? Why don't you have roughness on this? Export UV sets as tiles, create padding, use export constructor for per channel packing. Whoa. Uh, yeah, I want that. Export roughness. Export metalness. Yeah. Tangent normal map. Uh, I don't know why you're calling it that, but okay. Yeah, sure. I thought about exporting the um, curvature because it feels like I could do something interesting um, with curvature and a shader. But that's a project for another time. Oh, crap. Okay. Oh, I see. Right, add to oh my wait oh ooh, ooh. this is what I want okay so what am I reading here so in Unity I have got why are you lagging did I change something what did I change it should be in slow about okay so, metallic, roughness, occlusion. Metallic goes in R. So, I want metalness. Uh, roughness goes in the G. And I can save this whole thing. So, I want to do this again. It's not glossiness. <clears throat> um, what did I say it was? Roughness. Metalness, roughness. And ambient occlusion in the B. And I'm not using the A. So this uh, texture will be called uh, Met Metrof. Oak. Okay. So I don't need the occlusion layer. I do need the normal layer. Tangent space norm. I don't know why tangent space, but okay, fine. Metallic. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, yeah. This is that's what was going on. So Unity, uh, yeah, I forgot about that. In their normal thing, they've got a metallic and they've got a glossiness in their uh, normal thing. Uh, glossiness is the opposite of roughness. Um uh, I think. Hopefully I'm doing this correctly with metalness roughness and uh, occlusion. If I need to switch to metalness glossiness, then I can. Albedo, color, alpha. Uh, I don't really need an alpha channel. Uh, I'm just going to do RGB. And I'm doing RGB on this one as well, not RGBA. Uh, I'm not going to do an emission map. So cool. This is a new preset, which is the Chris texture. Fuck. I mean, uh, uh, okay. I just overwrote Unity with that, I think. Um, okay, so uh, Unity Chris. So I will find it. Um, regular Unity. Not that I'm ever going to use it anyway, but. Oh well, blew it away. That's too easy to do, but fine. Okay, so I want an FBX. Uh, don't want to save it in that random spot. Save it over here in not in that either. That's no. Okay, I will. Actually, 
not in there. Why is that changed? Huh. <clears throat> okay. Z3 Bathorns. That's what this final name of this guy will be, I guess. Uh, textures, please put that in the same spot. No, you don't. You go with... You go with the model. Come on. What? TGA? What was that? Let's try that again. I left that as a TGA. I sure did. Update save. All right. Did you export all of yourself? You did. Good for you. Yeah, the TGA is 12 uh, megs just for that. I hate, Can I just say, I really, really hate it when artists give a TGA. I, I understand that there's no color compression whatsoever happening, but PJ, PNG is loss, lossless enough. Um, I should arguably be using JPEGs for these things because I don't need an alpha channel. But this is small enough. All right, I got bat horns and this stuff. So, see how it looks in Unity. Uh, I'm going to shrink this way on down. And this is just so I can move around. The real view is in the, mi in the middle there. Uh, apparently, I changed something to do with Bell Prime. Oh, yeah, I was messing with the material, but I just regret that later. Um, doesn't matter. Z4, spiky horns. We have Z3 bat horns. I don't know why I got mixed up with my Z4 and Z3, but I did. All right, this is facing the correct direction. Moving this back. I'm going to delete all of these other things because I am sick of them. And I know that one of them is actually what's being used in. Mm, the fixed one I will keep because that's what's actually being used in my 3D coat project. Although for all I know, the 3D coat project probably loaded in and it's yeah, it did load it in. It doesn't need that anymore, so I don't need that anymore. Okay. Um, uh, these things I don't need. So. <clears throat> James Bond coming on. Okay. We're going to do a new material, which I'm just going to handle directly. Um, Z3 bat horns. And it's so laggy. <laughs> Arkin, I think I have one that, um, all right, so I want not rotational, I don't need rim lighting, I don't need refractive. Uh, all of these have emission. But, but, what I can do, and that's why I did that, I can send a really tiny uh, black texture and then there's no emission, and it's like a couple of kilobytes. Um, and keeps fewer shaders, which is nice. Uh, all right. This can get the preview, can get way smaller. Come on, get out of my way. I can't see. I hate you. Go, 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 go. Why are you not working? There we go. All right, that's what's more typical. Um, all right. So, ba, 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 ba. render Q 2000 is the um, um, uh, normal graphics uh, layer. All right, 
now I've applied my material here, but of course it looks awful right now because it's missing <laughs> all its inputs. Um, but it is getting the extra reflections and so forth there. Does this thing have the, this does not. What's the name of that other material? Uh, the other shader is CubeMap HSV. That's the one. That's the one that I need to use for this. That's <clears throat> what happens with creating too many things over the years. Uh, CubeMap HSV, definitely not double sided. I don't need radial UVs. There we go. Okay. Now, the emission color of brightness of you know yeah uh, emission I need I have a texture that I think is called black and it's uh, teeny 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 tiny so um, I'm gonna call this the start of my um, zenith matte start so save me time in the future. And I will just stick this under here. Now, you're facing the right direction. You have that for vertex and tries. Okay, fine. You can live with that. Uh, normals. I'm going to calculate those. Sorry. Yep. Boom. Fixed. Yeah. Same number of that. All right. <laughs> okay, it's about as good as that's going to get uh, from looking at those settings. Um, oh, I've got two UV layers. Why? It's probably the FBX export did that. And that will be skipped in the future. Um, all right, so get our diffuse map here, um, which we can't see a lot of our details yet because of the uh, uh, lack of our combined map for after that. Um, still, everything looks really, really wrong because without a normal map, you just can't see anything really. So, until you put on your normal map, you may as well just ignore it. All right, so this is what I'm getting from this. <laughs> Not acceptable. Let's see what's going on. All right, so normal map. Um, oh, I've got a really, uh, I've got a, a, a Ibido brightness multiplier on. That didn't help anything. Um, Albedo ratio to HDR. That also didn't help anything. Here we go. So we're getting closer to what is intended. <laughs> okay. Uh, now... I'm going to have to correct that on my basic one. Uh, okay, so we went from this over to this. Now it's looking uh, glossy to a little bit of a silly degree. So if I adjust the roughness add up like this, I can make it look you know, not rough at all, really. Um, The occlusion map, unfortunately, is just too strong on a lot of these in general, even coming in. If you want the light side to look bright enough in the IBL thing. Oh, yeah. Look at all that detail that's coming through. A little bit of aliasing there, that's all right. Okay, we've still got more of a sheen than I really want on this. Um, the reason partially has to do with my shader itself. 
Um, may also be related to the glossiness thing. Let's test that out. This looks so much better. Jeez. All right. So G glossiness. What happens if we do this? Let's find out. Okay, let's put these back to their defaults. Yep, that was it. The roughness is actually what I was looking for, not the, uh, uh, the or sorry, the glossiness was what I was looking for out of here, not the roughness. <clears throat> so this is a very white um, IBL being applied to it. And so that, that's just kind of the nature of it. Um, because it's a very clean look. But you can see how uh, things look metallic, you know, a certain way. There's an extra gloss here, which is really on all the AIOR shifts because of the way that I'm handling the um, the IBL in general. Um, the I can take off specular highlights. I do that sometimes for models. I can also take off reflections entirely, uh, which is not a thing to do. But if I took off reflections entirely, you can see, um, if I turn back on specular highlights, um, you can see this looks a lot more like um, what it did in the other program. Um, basically, the reflection maps are what is causing it. Now, the reflection maps are important for having everything have kind of a unified look. But in order to compensate for this being just a little too much, um, I can adjust some things. So first of all, no specular highlights, I don't think. Uh, maybe, maybe, I don't know. You lose the metal look if you take off specular highlights. So, um, So, which it does look more alien this way. This is the sort of uh, reflection effect. That I don't really think. I don't know if it's even possible in the other game, uh, in the other program. Hmm. Am I happy with this? Am I happy with this? What if I didn't use reflections and I instead blend in cube map only? This is part of figuring out the workflow. Uh, yeah, not a fan. But if I did something very white, not that. Uh, I don't think I want cube maps on these, extra cube maps anyway. I don't know. This would certainly cut down on my uh, VRAM use for these Zenith models. See, look, the edges and everything. I would have to um, really adjust the lighting if I'm not going to use general reflections. But what I am going to do is I'm going to get rid of the cube map. Um, so if I wanted rim lighting, I could have it, and I could kind of offset some of what's being seen there. 
what if I did that? All of these shaders I've made over the years. Uh, rimlet. And then let's take off specular highlights and reflections. Now let's put specular highlights back on. So we're still looking metallic. Metalness and thing back to normal. Okay. This now looks extremely like this. It's in a different lighting environment, but it looks a lot like it. Now, it doesn't have... It's very strange for me to turn off reflection. <laughs> All right. Uh, but man, it looks so good. Okay, so what am I going to do with this? And the normal maps even come through at the right threshold. I'm not having to adjust it. It's so nice. I'm really happy. And it doesn't match. So what I'm going to do is start having a bit of... Let's kind of go into the RNG realm, maybe, for a rim lighting. And I built all this into one vector through. Uh, all right. Um, so scale. Uh, scale is so power. Fresno bias scale. So Fresno effect, really strong. Oop, that went negative. Uh, in the wrong direction. Okay, Fresno just from the edges. The bias. You can get a lot of really weird effects with these, as you can tell. Um, and the power. <laughs> Come on. What is happening? I think I'm. Confused it. Um, sometimes when you go all the way around, the okay, really? Hmm. What did I do? This is that's crazy. The game window itself is not able to see it correctly right now. But everything, oh, I've, I've seen this before. I think if I hit play, play, then I think it will reset. Come on. Right now it's frozen while it's thinking about playing. Yep, and fixed itself. There's some sort of overflow that happens. Uh, I'm seeing that in the older versions of Unity there as well. So I got to be really careful with the Fresno to not blow it out. Um, okay. Power up makes this go more towards the edges. And really what I want is darkness there at the edges. So I'm trying to replicate a little bit the lighting effect from If I was going to do this properly, then I think what I would need to do is have a multiplicative Fresno instead of probably the additive that I've got right now. Let's see about that. I'm opening up the shader. Okay, what's happening with this? So we've got Fresno stuff goes in here, and then it's being multiplied with that. That's fine. And then this is being added to that. So let's make a new shader. I want a Zenith shader. So here's the original. Make a copy. Okay, uh, come in, Rimlet, Rim Lighting 1, okay, here we go, Rim Lighting Molt, and I am 
emissive, taking that out. It's not going to be emissive. Arc and combined, HSV, rim lighting, whatever that second thing was. It's, I'm going to have to find it in this list in a minute. <clears throat> That's why I am. Waiting for it to compile, sort of compile. There it goes. You can do it. No, oh, you didn't do it. I just stopped in the middle of thinking about it. Mm. There we go. Maybe. Arkin combined, so HSV is going to be after combined. Uh, parallax double, no. Combined HSV rim lighting molt. It's the one. Hurry up and wait again. All right, first thing we'll do. Combine HSV Rimlet Molt. Save it. Now, over here on this material. Oh, the lag, it's so slow. <sighs> How much weaker things would be? All right, uh, this one. All right, thus far it's not actually any different though. So first of all, thank you for your service emission. We're gonna skip your uh, all right. So emission in general is what. All right, so I don't want this to be in the emission channel anymore. We're going to use this rim lighting. We're going to use this rim lighting. Uh, multiplicatively on our albedo, the main diffuse color. We're going to have no emission whatsoever. Perfect. Okay. Now we're playing with color. Um, now. Um, do, 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 shoot. Uh, I can't multiply that in. Because what I need to multiply in, I want multiplying that in all the dark parts, which are usually the unlit parts, uh, become black. So what I really need, I need to inverse this. I, I, I can do this just in here. So I just invert the Fresnel effect, I think, maybe. That's going to invert the colors, though, too. It doesn't work. Scale. <laughs> Whoa, that's kind of cool, though. Um, so I just, OK, I do want to multiply. This is what I want. But I want to invert it. So uh, I just need to invert my, which part of the geometry this is applying to. So all the Fresnel stuff has one output, which is fine, but I need to, uh, is there an inverse? Now, um, what is this output? Is this a, just a vector? Okay, so we're going to do an add, I think, and we're going to have A is 
why am I doing an add? I'm doing a subtraction. So, you know, A is 1 minus blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying this is an add. Delete. Go away. What's happening? All right, there we go. Subtract. So we're going to have 1 minus our vector from here. And that is what will feed this. And now it should invert which parts are getting the Fresnel effect. Yep. Now, but it's not inverting the colors, which is good. I don't want it to. So now, yeah. Wait, what? Oh, I am inverting the colors. Maybe. Dang it. Okay. What I need to do is not think about the Fresnel effect. I need to hmm. normal, 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 world normal. I need, I think, the inverse of the world normal. Is that correct? Let's give it a shot. Okay. Internal data one is so me, uh, A is one on all three aspects of the vector. That's going into the view direction, and this is going into here to be multiplied. So or uh not view direction. World normal. So I'm inverting the world normals for the purposes of the Fresnel calculation. I want an inverted Fresnel effect. And that's working, but it's funky. I don't like it. Can I then... They have some blend modes. Um, these are more expensive, but this is honestly what I want. So, so source in destiny. Destiny is kind of funny, right? So the destination, the source. The idea is this is kind of like a Photoshop thing. So what I want is uh okay color burn nope color dodge N nope uh soft light hard light mm, overlay might be it wait that's color burn I did, did i not just say did i not I don't understand. Wait. Okay. okay. There is overlay. That was weird. Um, So now we're back to what we're seeing over here, which is nice. If I turn on reflections, it looks a lot more involved in this scene. A distance it's adding specular see that's the thing right there see this this is what I was trying to make, get rid of with the Fresno 
Um, it's that edge glow effect when we don't have reflections on. Um, if I could do that, then that would... <clears throat> but normally Fresnel effects are additive. And uh, adding color is just going to make it brighter. So, um, oh, this just doesn't like to change, period. Um, so, is there anything interesting to do with this Fresnel, or am I just barking up the wrong tree? So, Scale. Why is that get so dark down there? It's so weird. Can I make it? Am I still messing with the? No, I'm not. Wait, here we go. Can see what the Fresnel is at that point. So, okay, soft light's not going to do it. <laughs> That's going to be insane. Screen is a popular thing in Photoshop that's hard to recreate. I've got, oh, I've got a negative bias right now. When did that happen? Well, this is an interesting way to kind of dynamically affect the color tone of this. This is not exactly what I would normally use a Fresnel effect for. Um, this is wiping out my green here. Not happy. Nope. Nope, nope. Yeah, look how much look how much gets lost. This is not good. All right, um, I'm gonna do something else later with this, but for now, I'm not gonna do all these calculations in the shader just to have it. This thing is named wrong, but we'll live. I'll live. Okay, so this is my Zenith shader for now. Compared to everything else, this looks good. I mean, you know, all the other options I was just trying. I cannot, I cannot abide these borders. They suck so hard. That's just not okay. This lighting, it looks terrible. So, so bad. So glossy it is. And a lot of times I would add roughness here in order to try and offset that in kind of a linear fashion. Um, and that does get me back more to what we're seeing in the other side. Looking for reference here. And these are glossy in the corners. These are glossy in the crevices. They're smoother here. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. There is a little, this has more of a plasticky sheen right at the moment. So if I just, just a tiny bit, now that looks like metal instead of like plastic. We lost a lot of our reflection. Our borders are okay here. I'm going to rename this. Oh God, that takes so long. I'm not going to rename the shader right now. So, okay, this is LOD zero for this model. 
That is done. The shader will be consistent with all of them. Now, nice thing about this is, and I could experiment with the neural maps. These might actually need a little bump. Ha, pun not intended. Eh, it's not to the point where it actually is able to matter in here. Okay. So, yeah, most of the interesting details you'd see from this thing, you can see from afar. Whoa! The lighting obviously is different. This is surrounded by light on every side. I can approximate that by um, turning this thing. And so, I mean, you can see all of it looks good in uh, different sides. If I come to the dark side of this, is this sufficiently bright is the question. If I want it to be brighter on the dark side anyway, I can adjust the occlusion multiplier there and have the occlusion map affect it less. So, uh, do I want to do that? Yes, I think I do. It's more consistent with other things. On the dark side, it looks super duper duper glossy. On the bright side, it looks more metallic and reasonable. That is a quirk of how I've designed the lighting. And, um, I uh, just kind of live with it. That is fine. This was fine. <laughs> All right, I've got three deleted um, meshes here. So, all right, we've got our bat horns here. I can revolve rotation. What? Oh no! No bat horns. No. Ah, uh, really? You're oriented this way? I don't understand. I fixed you. Okay. That bites. I need a way to bake the orientation in. So let's see if the FBX exporter will do that again. It seemed to for the other thing. So selected objects, it's a single FBX. Maybe I was just crazy and it didn't actually work before. Uh, so it rotated part of it, but not all of it. What's up with that? Okay. Uh, I can't remember if this program is one of the ones that allows you to flip the... Huh. Looks like not. Okay. Let's try that again. So it, it did correctly map the y rotation but not the z maybe that just the z is inverted in general so let's try this one more time unity fx exporter high quality Mm. There's no way to do that. Okay. Mesh Simplify used to do this for me. 
but it doesn't seem to work on these models. Probably it doesn't work on anything. Man, it's so much slower than Polyview. Yeah, it's just totally broken. It's really annoying. Okay. Did I build in a way to correct for this? That's the next question. I don't believe I did. It's not a good way to correct for that, is why. I had a way of correcting for that at one point, and it often went poorly. You should just bake it into the mesh, was my reasoning, and I used to have a really easy way to do that. Let's try doing a quick edit. We'll see if it can handle this many meshes, this many polys. <clears throat> I can use, uh, man, I'm, okay. I can use, uh, I got something. Uh, yeah, thanks, quick edit. You're not quick enough, and you also don't do what I want. In mesh tools, mesh maker, mesh tools. That's what I want. Okay, so I'm going to zero this thing out so that it's uh, in its default orientation. Flip meshes. Um, please say you've got rotation. Um, mostly I just need to flip anyway. So flip on the Z. Oh, great. And the center's offset too. Glad I noticed that now. All right, well, that's more correct. Um... Again, more correct, but still really wrong. What the? Oh, all right, got it corrected. See, don't mess this up. You know what I mean? Like when you've got a, I'm <laughs> so much extra work I've created for myself with all this. So um, at this point, also I need to transform the pivot point because it looks like. Uh, it looks like the pivot point is somewhere not in the center, so let's fix that. Pivot point is back there. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, okay, in order to do this, so in other words, in the game, that's where we'd be rotating around. Uh, transform pivot point zero. Ah, shoot, I see. So I need to manually fix this. So I need to use this other view. So I can put its position back up where the other thing is, so I can see them. Pivot point is where this, whoop. Uh, position, I want to come for, nope, nope. I want to come forward on the z-axis, so. Oh, wow, it's off to the side as well. Oh, that's because I put it off to the side. That was my bad. This will determine how this thing rotates. Um, I may fix this just in quick edit, as slow as that is to open. Save mesh as Z3 bat horns corrected direction. And that puts it in some other folder at horns. Correct the direction. It's just an asset format now. Put that back over here. This thing now is 
using the corrected direction one. And now, tools, quick edit, edit selected mesh. I want it to calculate the bounds for me and put the um, pivot point in the actual center. Otherwise, this thing's going to be swinging way out. Center pivot. Uh -huh. Looks like I had it pretty close as it was. Um, and now, can't see which button is the save one. Face selection and touch. Selection. Where's the save button? I think it's that. Save changes? Yes. All right. 2481 verts, 3800 tries, and it's game ready. So now I need to make uh, some LEDs for it. So, so if I adjust this, you can see it actually spins on its axis instead of swinging way off like it would have otherwise. Um, nope, nope. <laughs> Muscle memory, man. Okay, polyfew. What are you editing? It's editing the original. Because this is a prefab. Fine, revert them all. Now put that and put that. They changed their uh, prefab stuff. I forget how to do some of it. Unpack prefab completely. Okay, that's what I want. Now, clicking off, clicking on. You better be using the right model now. You're not. What is wrong with you? This is why you add components when you want to add components, not willy-nilly from the start. All right, I will go ahead and make a pre uh, prefab of this, facing the correct direction and having the correct model on it. Does this prefab contain polyfew? It does not. Okay, polyfew, you get a few points, but you also have lost a lot of points. So now we're working. Okay, can't see much of a difference to be honest, which is nice. <clears throat> so, we will call this LED1, and I need to save it. There should be a button for that somewhere around here. Ba -ba 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 I guess reduce. I think that does it. Yeah, I need to save it. You tell me some weird things that are not true. Sure. Just save it in there. No, I'm not going to exit the scene. Okay, this is the poly reduced one down a lot. So this is C three bad horns LOD one. I wish it would let me just name this stuff, but whatever, it works. LOD one. That is plenty. All right, from here, go down even more. Wow, this is such a good algorithm. Jeez. Okay. Uh, wrong button. I do want to save. Sorry, I lied. Thought you meant the scene. Uh. Did you just destroy my... Oh, you asshole. <sighs> well, that's a nice LED too. So, what that tells me is that I have to take the damn prefab out of here every time Put it back in. 
Now, I would like an LOD1, please. Thank you. Yes. LED two, LED one, bat horns off, bat horns back in, automatic LED. I don't trust you. Sorry. They always mess that part up. All right. Um, Time to an L LED three, I think. My God, this is good. Polyfew, you get credit where it really counts, I gotta say. Look at how good that is for that few polygons. That's amazing. <laughs> Wow. DLC2, Zenith, Spiky Horns. Again. Cancel out of that. I'm going to have to recode some of this polyview thing. This thing's driving me nuts. It's really, really good and also really, really bad. LOD3. Okay. Bat horns, you come out. Bat horns, go in. Probably few stay out of my business right now. Now it's time to add a Arkan Visual Saluma ship. It has a bunch of complaints, which is optimal <laughs> because um, 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 it's it's meant to fix them for me. So I just hit my auto fix button and that's happy. I wonder if I can safe apply prefab. I wonder if that still works. Looks like it does. Nifty. Pivot's still okay. All right, I'm happy. All right, so now uh, I think this is LOD1. Yep, good. LOD2. LOD3. Okay, now we're going to do overriding tests with this. So, I'm going to test LOD0, which is what this is right now. LOD1. Incidentally, time to make four distances here. Okay, so this is. Uh, It's not showing me the distance for some reason. Um, zero, one, uh, one. It's not calculating out what distance I'm at. That's annoying. Okay, I'm going to call this, we'll say, Say 200 for this, it should be pretty reasonable. We'll say um, 1500 for this, and we'll say uh, switch to the last one at 5000, I guess. Clear any override, safe apply prefab. This should work. These numbers should be fine. Uh, so, LED zero. Oh, there's my distance. All right, so we just passed 100. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know what? LOD1. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll go to 700. What do I have on the Bell Prime? I just have one. Okay, so never mind. 700. 
1500. It's been a while since I've done this. And I think 15,000 was what I was setting for the end. Safe apply prefab. We have no. All right, cool. So now. This is ready for use in the game. It's called Z3 Bat Horns, doesn't really matter. I need to change the arc and bundle to be exp2 zenith onslaught and copy path. The path that will be used in there is this in the asset bundle for DLC2. And this unit is something. I don't know what it is. Um, Bell Prime can cease visiting with us for a little bit. Um, Take another couple of uh, Difficult, not difficulty. Yeah, I made this to be a particularly challenging piece to paint, to sculpt, to poly reduce. Um, and uh, that was successful. Um, so it hit all of the worst case scenarios for me with all of those things. And the end result is something that. Uh, Looks like it will use mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm going to let it use 5 megs for that. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. What if I use... a high quality compression? And yeah, that makes it BC7 for Windows, which that's not any any better for purposes. The crunch compression, I don't understand. Oh, wow. Jeez. We'll just knock it out of the park there, crunch compression, why don't you? I can't tell a visual difference. We went from five megs to one. Good Lord. It's slow. It's annoying. Um, and if I crunch compress this thing, um, this is 2.7 megs. This is the metalness, roughness, etc. See a good spot where there's several differences between that so it was two point something 2.3 2.7 0.7 oh my god and there's no visible difference 
but crunch compression has improved a lot. Okay, I see a little bit of a difference, but man, is it tiny. 0 0.5. Okay, so this whole thing weighs <laughs> in it. Um, VRAM wise, we're looking at, geez, okay, are you kidding me? If I use, I need to, I need to research crunch compression some more. I need to figure out what hardware that works on and all the different exact specifications for it. But um, if that's the case, then this weighs in at, um, just under two and a half megs for the textures in VRAM for one of these and uh, less for the other things. And since I'm not including a cube map on the shader, it won't be uh, accidentally loading a second cube map into RAM, which is something that was happening a lot in DLC 1. Uh, so I'm actually pretty happy with my choice to kind of steer away from specific cube maps with this. Because of my new painting technique, uh, it's just not necessary. So this level of uh, quality is now something that I can hit um, in a fraction of the RAM, which is very exciting. So we'll see. I have no idea what this is going to be used for. Um, something. Thanks for watching. Stop him for now.